In order to live an extraordinary and abundant life, you must focus on your internal battle and win within. My name is Randy Wilson, and welcome to the Rich Mind Podcast. All right, everyone, welcome back to the Rich Mind Podcast. And today, coming back with another fun episode. Uh, we're just giggling and just what we do, right? I'm bringing back another episode with my beautiful wife, Stacy Wilson. Stacy, help say hello out there to the world out there in internet land. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Nice to be here again today with you all. Why are you laughing? See, it's because you're getting better. You're finally getting better at that whole opening up and saying hello to everybody. At the first few times, it's it was been like pretty restricted. So I'm trying to get you to open up and loosen up a little bit. So yeah, that, that was much better. So congratulations. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> All right, folks, enough of our goofiness. Appreciate you being here today. I want to talk about, and this was something that, uh, actually we just came up with this a little bit ago. This is a quote that I learned from Earl Nightingale in the, in the program lead the field. This was the very first personal development program that I went through and he said this inside of that program. So first off, if you don't have lead the field, go get lead the field. If you're trying to become more, do more, be more, all the mores, all the stuff, you need to get lead the field. It's absolutely been probably one of the most impactful programs on my life. With that said, inside of the program, he has this one quote. So a lot of times I feel like people look around and they see people with with the, the stuff, right? They see people with the cars and the houses and the, you know, quote unquote, whatever success means to them. And they use the term lucky. They say that, wow, that person's just lucky. So that brings me back then to the quote from Earl Nightingale. And he talks about luck. And he said, luck is when preparedness means opportunity. And then he pauses for a split second. And then he goes, an opportunity is there all the time. So let me repeat that one more time. The quote is, luck is when preparedness meets opportunity and opportunity is there all the time. And so that's where I want to talk about that with, with Stacy. We have been, uh, in the last few years, we've really made some dedicated decisions. That's one thing I like to talk about here on the podcast. We've, we've really decided to go deep in specific subjects and learning how to become great in those certain topics. Stacy has gone into the wedding business and wedding planning and coordinating and everything wedding you should think of Stacy. For myself, I've decided to go down the path of becoming a, a podcaster and being really good at being a podcaster. Now, hopefully, if you're listening to this, you think that I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm, I'm putting myself in that category of I want to become even better. So I'm going through the reps. I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to, every time I show up, even today, I'm trying to do a better job at being a podcaster so that someday in the future, I don't know when that future will be, somebody potentially could look at me or Stacy and say, wow, you guys are lucky because of what we've accomplished. And today I want to have the discussion of it doesn't, that's not what it's all about. It's not about the luck. It's about making the decision and going deep and learning the skills required to become great at a specific subject. So with all that said, Stace, I appreciate you coming back on with us here. What, when I mentioned that to you, we talked about it this morning. You, you've heard me say that, that quote so many times. And when the first time I heard it many years ago, I was, I was just blown away that that totally hit home for me. What does that mean for you? What is, what is it comes to mind when you think about that quote? Um, for me, it, it, it makes sense because luck for me doesn't seem like that's a real word. You don't get lucky. You have to be prepared and open to see or be able to take advantage of something when it comes your way. And, you know, I guess people can get lucky and win money or get lucky and get something outside of themselves. But most things you still have to be looking for or wanting for it to be able to happen. It's not just going to always drop in your lap, I guess. So that to me is what luck is something that just drops in your lap that you weren't expecting. And that's not a normal scenario, at least not in my experience. So. so talk about how we, and I'm going to have you talk about yours at first, right? You've, we mm -hmm. made the decision, uh, 
right around the pandemic time. So right around 2020 that Mm -hmm. you were going to go all in and really learn the skills required to be a professional wedding. And you put, you know, you put the other word that goes along with it, right? Basically just anything weddings, you were Mm going to be the main person. Uh, Anytime anybody thought of, of the two, right? They were going to put your name and weddings together. Talk about how making that decision and going all in has led you to opportunities that may have passed you by had you not been aware and had that goal to become great at one thing. Right. Yeah. Um, Obviously, we've been talking about weddings since we were engaged because I've told you I've always wanted to do that. So for me, living my life the way we lived it with the kids was number one. And then when the opportunity came that everybody was grown and doing their thing, it became forefront in my brain that, okay, I want to get back to whatever it takes to do the wedding thing, as you well know. And once I started looking around, I could see that there was opportunities as far as just regular jobs, even to get your foot in the door. Um, You hear that a lot. You just got to get your foot in the door. And when I first started it, that's what I wanted to do. I just wanted to get my foot in the door and try it and make sure it's what I always thought it would be or always thought I wanted it to be. So when we made that decision and it took you a minute to get on board that I was going to get a job to try it out. Um, but you saw within two, what, two weeks, maybe three that I was like, oh yeah, this is who and what I am meant to be doing. And it wasn't luck. It was starting to really think about it and look for it. And I had applied for like two of them. And obviously we both live by the fact that if it didn't work out, it wasn't meant to be, it wasn't the right thing at the time. And when the opportunity did show itself and I did jump all in, wow, it was just a shotgun experience at that point. Then it was full in all in and went from being told I'd do a wedding a weekend to doing three and four a weekend within the first month. So I of course loved it. And yeah, I lived for every moment, every weekend. I couldn't wait to get to the weekends to get to weddings. So So it wasn't really work for you, right? Would you agree? I mean, you, you, so, so I think one of the key takeaways I want folks to take from this is that having permission to give themselves to whatever, whatever skill they want to acquire, whatever uh, position they want to attain in the future, to go find a place, find somewhere to go do it, whether it's in a working environment or like I said, even myself with the podcast, right? I, I launched the podcast. I had a vision, but I just went for it and I've gone all in. But talk about how giving yourself permission then. I know you said, and you're right, I was a little bit hesitant at first <laughs> when you were coming to me saying, I want to go try this. And I want to go try that because we were in a transition with our own lives, right? But at the same right. time, how impactful that's been to gain the, basically you're getting on, you're getting paid a, a wage to be taught a skill set that is now blossoming into something bigger than you could have ever imagined, I would assume back then. Talk about that a little bit. Right. For me, I mean, we had run our businesses, so we both, I definitely had an idea of how to approach business in general, but learning how to incorporate everything that goes into a wedding day, everything that I've always dreamed, thought, written down that I would be doing came to truth when I got to try it out. And it's so, it was like, um, almost like a muscle reflex or a muscle exercise. I'd been building that muscle and those thoughts and those dreams in my brain for so long that when I actually got to be a part of it and execute it and see it work the way you thought it would work, it was amazing. And like you, you know, people always tell you, if you find something you love, you'll never work a day in your life. And that for sure was a first time for me that that was hundred percent true. I mean, you can vouch, I was working 50, 60, 70 hours in a weekend from Thursday to Sunday night. And I would do it without even thinking twice. And it has led now to knowing that I can help even more people that I wanted to branch out and start my own business and help people more one-on-one. I could see the need in what I was doing, where I was at, that helping people just in a 24 hour period wasn't enough love or wasn't enough committed time to helping them. So that's where, when I got the opportunity to start doing my own business or adding some coordinating into what I'm doing now, um, 
you're able to really get a feel for what those people are wanting, what they're going through. They're not just a, to me, wedding people are not just a day in the shade. They're there. It's a process and they need to be loved on through the process. Maybe not the whole year of planning, but definitely a month or two of, you know, okay, where are we at? What are you feeling? How do you keep you calm? How do we make you happy? And it just led to who I am and what I am. And just even more, it just keeps growing how much more I love it. So, so yeah, it, and it's been fun to watch you too. So obviously I'm, yeah. I'm with you 99% of the time. And so I see that. So congratulations on everything you've done up to this point. So take a second and speak to the people out there listening that they might be in a position in life, whether it's, uh, you know, whether it's a job they don't like, just say, let's just say it's a situation that they're not con- uh, you know, content with, right? They're not, just not happy mm-hmm. with and how you allowing yourself to have the permission to go find the job, right? That was going to pay mm-hmm. you a wage enough for us to quote unquote live, but then right. to gain the skill set. Okay. Where I want to go with that is then, so you've gained then the skill set to build the confidence to then be able to, to speak to other people about starting and branching out into your own venture. Let's say somebody is, has a dream or a desire to, to start a business. It doesn't have to be in the wedding industry. It doesn't yeah. have to be doing podcasting. It doesn't have to be anything specific, but just that, that transition from, okay, you made the decision. I want to go be a wedding person. I'm just going to call it a wedding person. You made the decision. Then you went and found the opportunity to do that. And a, basically you were getting paid to train, right? You're training yourself. And then now you're in the process of transitioning over into helping people in a bigger way. Can you, does that make sense where I'm going with that question? Yeah. Can you just kind yeah. of describe that, that process? Yeah. Um, it's having that idea and allowing yourself, you know, everybody, if you allow yourself to think about it, you've always kind of thought, Hmm, I wonder what it'd be like to be able to do X, Y, Z. And you've got to allow yourself to say, okay, I want to go find out more. Maybe you just need to educate yourself first more about X, Y, Z, especially if it's a total 360 from what you normally would be doing. If you're talking about going from accounting to, I don't know, selling something that's completely different worlds. So, but then Finding somebody that you can ask questions to is another place I started. I have, we have two or three friends that own their own wedding businesses. So I was able to help them a little bit here and there. And that of course drove the interest even deeper. Um, So yeah, if you know, most people know one or two people doing what you want to be doing. So don't be afraid to reach out to that person and say, Hey, I know this is going to sound weird, but would you mind having a conversation and telling me about what you do, what you like about it, what you don't like about it, um, some of the flaws? A lot of people think everything's going to be roses. And I can tell you, I love weddings. But they're exhausting. They are really <laughs> long days. They, they are fully long days. They're normally a 12 to 15 hour day. Most people do not sign up to work a 12 to 15 hour day. That's probably the only thing that I would give to you as a downfall is that they're exhausting. You got to be prepared. But that's the only thing I think I've ever told you that's the downfall. Even when it's a rough family or a rough group or whatever, there's still so many good things in the day that for me, there's no major downfalls except being tired at the end of the day. So it's getting to be able to talk to somebody or getting, hey, can I come help you with your business? Which is what I did in the beginning. Hey, let me come help you a few nights flipping, flipping the venue, helping set up the, the behind the scenes stuff that there again, it's tiring. Um, but it gives you that feel of accomplishment though. When you see a venue go from trashed out because of something to gorgeous and ready for that wedding the next afternoon, it's such a feeling of, you know, total accomplishment. And then it revives, you know, you're exhausted, but it revives that excitement that you're like, okay, I'm ready to go again tomorrow. What time do I be here? Oh, nine. It's 2 a.m. I got to be back here at nine. Okay. Let's do that because it is, you see it come to life and you see somebody else's dream come alive. So if you can get in and even just observe at a bird's eye view on something that you think you want to be doing, figure out who that person is and ask them. Most people are going to be willing to share, especially if it's what they're doing for their life thing. And if they actually like it, they're going to be more than willing to share what they're doing and let you come in and see it and experience it. 
And that's one thing we've done with, so one hiccup, I think that we might've had at the beginning, but we've worked through it quickly was the finance piece, right? The whole, mm -hmm. cause you might have to work necessarily for free for a little while. Uh, yep. For example, I'll, I'll kind of throw my spin on there, right? With the podcast, I'm not monetizing this podcast. I'm actually doing it because I love to do it. Just like what you're talking about with the weddings. I love having conversations with folks. I love hitting record and staring into this camera, sharing whatever knowledge is going through in my mind at that moment, whether it's good, bad, or otherwise, it doesn't matter. I just love the process. I enjoy editing in the background. It's time consuming, but I enjoy doing that. I enjoy trying to market and promote it. With all that said, I'm doing that literally out of my own pocket. I'm not necessarily making any money doing what I'm doing. But what I can tell you is that based on doing my reps and going through the processes of learning the skill set to hit record, to record myself, let's just call it well, to be to do it well enough in the future, that's where the luck is going to kick in someday. The luck is going to kick in and, and make it look like I'm lucky because whatever it ends up being, right? Whatever business opportunities come from it, whether I am able at some point to monetize from it, who knows what that outcome will be. But without the willingness to, for me, virtually doing it for free, you went to work for some people, right? But we weren't getting rich doing it by any means. It was yeah. basically an hourly job, right? Most mm -hmm. people would not necessarily care to do those things. Same thing with the, the podcast. Most people will not want to do what I do to produce this podcast. Same thing with you and the winnings. I guess what I want, the point I want to try to make though, is that find something that you enjoy to do a lot. If you need to make some financial sacrifices because we have, we've always been able to keep our expenditures. I don't know if comfortable is the right word. Would you, do you have a better word than comfortable for that? Um, realistic. Just maybe for under, yeah, yeah. Realistic under control. Realistic, I would probably say, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. we've never overextended ourselves ever in our entire being together, or at least when, if we have had, we've always been able to get it back under control pretty quick. But anyways, we've right. always had that control. So take a look at your finances and see if there are places where you can make some adjustments, um, cut back on some different things to be able to step into a position or an opportunity, or if you want to launch something, or if you want to do something, go get the skill set needed to then become valuable in the marketplace for you then to be, uh, be able to see the opportunities that are out there all over. Stacy, you're already, you're having many opportunities being presented to you. It's like, you're not even chasing after them because you're, you're doing the rips. You may, you just said it a few minutes ago, you were doing 50 hour weekends. We're not talking about 50 hour weeks. We're talking about 50 hour weekends. Yeah. So to say that you don't, to say that you don't have the expertise of the industry. Yeah. That's going to be hard to argue just based on the amount of time you've put into it. So yeah. Yeah, how much has that been in your confidence level? How has that helped you as far as being able then to go out and talk to different people about these opportunities that are being presented to you? Has that really built that, that muscle of confidence? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Definitely more so I'd say in the last six to nine months, um, having had a few people, I don't like the word expert, but you know, that gets, gets you, used. Okay. I, it, and I'm going to stop you right there because <laughs> that has happened. And I've, I've right. heard them say it. They've said yeah. it when I've been around and they literally are, mm -hmm. have said, well, Stacey, you're the expert. And yeah. it's like, I get a big old smile on my face. You yeah. kind of, you're a little bit more modest about it. And I would be too. Yeah. If anybody ever said that about me, I would be modest about it as well. But at the same time, for a, uh, to be a cheerleader of yours, I'm like, yeah, you're, <laughs> <laughs> because it's true. I, Cause I see all the effort yeah. that you've done, all the sacrifices that we've made individually and collectively as a, as a couple. Right. And right. for somebody to see that, and I'm, I'm sorry, I stole that away from you, but you're right. It's okay. Because it, people are noticing, but it's not work. You're not having no. to do anything. Yeah, it's just what you do. And yeah. that's, I, well, it's I so much fun you, to watch. It's just who I am. It's just how I do things. It's just, you know, I, I don't think about it. It's just, it's second nature, right? Everybody says something second nature. And for me, yeah, just wedding and loving on people, you know, me making people happy and loving on them is second nature. I don't think about it, but I'm beginning to embrace it, especially when I'm out in the industry, not necessarily in the, my venue or in 
that kind of setting, but just out in general, among other vendors, among whatever. And you have people coming to you and asking, hey, what's your opinion on this? Hey, this is what we're thinking about doing in our business now related to weddings. It's always it's a changing world. Weddings are always changing. We're all adapting right now, especially with the economy and everything else. So I do. I have vendors that are florists that are coming and saying, okay, do you think XYZ is a better way to burn the business or do we keep doing regular bouquets and do we keep or do we allow self-cut and do we allow, you know, you ask that or you got DJs saying, hey, I'm getting ready to branch out on my own. What do you think? And I'm like, go for it. Yeah. And I had a gentleman just the other day. He's like, I'm I've got five of my own this year. And I'm like, that's so cool. I said, you're ready to branch out. And he's like, yeah, I'm planning on by October being totally solo, leaving the current group that he's with. And uh, it was so exciting to see him so excited. But I've been talking to him and working with him since October. And to see him now here in April being like, I'm doing it. I'm going out on my own. It's like, this is so cool. I can't wait. And and then to hear him turn around and say in the same breath, that that's thanks to your encouragement or thanks to you saying you did this or you did that. And those days, it's still, I still humbly think, well, that's cool. You're just doing what you're supposed to be doing. I don't think of it as something that I've done. Um, but yeah, there's multiple of those experiences lately, probably definitely in the last 30 days, I can name probably six or seven people that, um, have branched out or are really considering figuring out, okay, how do I go do whatever's next? And, um, that are industry, that part of the industry, they're not, they're not brand new to the industry by any means, but the confidence and the push has been there to, you can do this on your own. You can, you can build it and go make your own money. And that's what one of them actually said the other day is I'm ready to not make somebody else money. I'm ready to make me money. I'm ready mm -hmm. to not live in the shadows, but I'm ready to be the spotlight. I'm like, that is so cool. So it's totally fun. And that's the same feeling I get working with the brides and grooms, right? Because they're finally in the spotlight for their day. So it's fun to turn it on people. And I, like I said, I don't turn it on myself usually, but it makes me feel good to know that everybody else is, you know, growing and becoming. And I guess I have a small part in that sometimes. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's fun. Okay. You have a big part of that. <laughs> well, so make sure you're aware. I know I get it. It's yeah. it's hard sometimes to take it in. And, but I, I just want to encourage you to try to do it more as I will as well. Right. So yeah, yeah it's, you're, you're fantastic, which is why mm -hmm. I love having these conversations with you. I'm hoping that the listeners out there can kind of hear, uh, you know, I've had a lot of solo episodes where I'm on there just kind of talking about what's going on in my mind, but to hear it from a different perspective, to hear from your lens, I think is super powerful that you're right. You can do it. And when I say you, I mean, you listening out there or watching, if you're on the YouTubes or wherever you're, whatever you're catching this from, you absolutely can do it. If, if Stacy and I can do it, two people from the Midwest here in Indiana, not much background as far as uh, we don't, we didn't have a lot of uh, family members or, you know, the rich uncle or, you know, the, the common stories you might hear of the people that are, are helped along. We're self-taught in a lot of the things that we're trying to accomplish. And so any quote unquote luck that we're experiencing is because we've been, we've been preparing for a very long time. And that's what I want to encourage with you or encourage you to do with this episode today. Where is it? So ask yourself this question. What area of your life would you literally do without being asked? It can be anything. Meaning for, as I said, the example for myself is the podcasting. I absolutely love doing this. Is this work? Absolutely. But it doesn't feel like work. Same thing with you, Stace, with the weddings. Yeah. I know you work a lot, <laughs> but at the same time, it doesn't, at the end of the day, yes, you're physically tired but it doesn't feel like work when you're going through the, uh, the emotions of going through the, the days, the day to day. So where is it that for you folks, when you're listening to this today, and if, when you discover what that is, see if there is a way for you to either begin small, begin small and start doing it consistently, start getting in your reps. Uh, one of the books, and, and I'm going to, I'm drawing a blank on exactly what the title was, but he talks about to become an expert in something that takes up to 10,000 hours of repetitions to become an expert. Now that number, I know that sounds like a big number, 
But at the same time, the point being is that you just need to get your reps in. And if you continuously do that consistently, you can become lucky too. And you'll be prepared and you'll be ready to take action. And the opportunities will be everywhere for you. And that's when life starts to get to be fun. I would say that Stace will start bringing this one in. And this has been fantastic. But as far as it's, it's like, it starts to be a little bit more fun. Would you agree oh, with yeah. that as far as life? And, sure. Yeah. It's like we're in control yeah. versus it mm-hmm. happening to us. Yeah. Yep. Definitely being able to choose it, being able to choose it and listening to you just talk one of my favorite quotes and I won't get it totally right, but if you're currently living your worst case scenario and you go try something new, the worst thing that can happen is you have to return to what you're doing now. So it doesn't hurt to go try something because you can always come back to what you're doing because you're already doing it. So don't be afraid to take that step out. Worst case scenario, you got to do what you're doing right now. But best case scenario, you step out and it gets even better. So, and there again, you're prepared and the luck shows up. Mic drop right there. I'm not even going to say anything else. That was fantastic. Folks, go out there. Have a fantastic day. Find some courage within yourself. Think through some areas of life where you just, you just love it. It's like you would do it all the time. It can be the most simple thing. The way technology is these days, you can take what you know and what you do. And even if it is in person, Stacy's work is in person. Mine is virtual. I'm, I'm working right now talking to you on this episode. But my point being is that there's so many different ways to take what you love to do and to put it into action to get your reps in, to get qualified as being good. And in Stacy's case, the expert, I had to say that one more time. Yeah. (laughs) Thanks. (laughs) Anyways, point being folks is you can do it. If we can do it, you can do it. And Stacy and I are here cheering you on, wanting you to achieve uh, whatever level of greatness and success that you're looking for in your life. So Stace, I appreciate you coming on. This has been a lot of fun again, as always. Thanks for having me again. (laughs) <laughs> again it's been we'll fun. have to do it again again, again. yeah we'll again. maybe do it again someday that's awesome well folks let so us thanks. know what you think about us and these little uh episodes that we're having uh stacy and i have a lot of fun together and it's been fun for me to kind of have her hop on here and add some value to you the listener as well so go out there focus on being great hey one quick thing about me in the podcast talking about pivots and trying to get better and all those kinds of things i've got some fantastic guests lined up I've got six already recorded. I only do usually episodes with guests once a week. So the amount of value and the amount of content that I've got coming your way from experts in their fields, anywhere from the art of persuasion. I had an interview yesterday with a couple down in in, uh, Peru. They're down in Peru. They're nomads, meaning they're digital nomads. That conversation was fantastic. I had a conversation this morning with a gentleman that lives in Japan that is a native Canadian, but he's an author. And he, I'm not, I'm not going to give you all the details. You're going to have to come back in the future to check out those episodes. My point that I want to leave you with is I've got a ton of great content coming to you that I want to try to use it as inspiration. I'm hoping you're going to be able to find nuggets of wisdom in whatever I'm sharing the comments and the uh, topics that we're going to be discussing on the episodes as well. So stay tuned. Uh, Those episodes are going to be launching on Tuesdays and they start coming, uh, depending on when you're listening to this, the first episode is going to drop with these these new um, uh, interviews on this coming Tuesday. So stay tuned. And I'm super excited to bring that information and content to you as well. Go out there. Have a fantastic day. I look forward to bringing Stacy and many more guests back to you again in the near future. Have a fantastic day. We'll talk soon. Bye now. Thank you for joining me on the Rich Mind Podcast. And remember, your external world is a reflection of what's going on inside of you. So focus every day on that internal battle and win within. Until next time, my friends. <laughs>